Hey everybody and welcome to Epic Every Day, our weekday podcast for busy, stressed out Christians who don't want to live in survival mode and instead want to actually thrive. Mm-hmm. I'm Liz Ferrix and this is my husband Evan. Hi there. And we're so glad you guys are here with us today. As you guys know, this week we are talking about community because community is part of Dr. May's Five Principles for Living a Life of Consecrated Intent. There you go. That's the title. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and in this one we're talking about our our connections with our brothers and sisters and our family all around us, our connection with other people. Yeah. And how important that is to our, our growth, our consecration. Right. And that's important since today we are talking about connection. It yeah. is Thursday. Right. It's kind of like we've been talking about this uh, Thursday stuff all week. So when I was thinking about this, halt was one of the first uh, things yeah. that came to mind. Why is that? Oh, well, well first, first of all, what's halt? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you know, a lot of these principles, these are how to get out of that overwhelm, stressed out, mm-hmm. you know, where you just feel like you're surviving everyday mode. And in 12 step, they talk about halt, which is being hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Yeah. It's kind of the famous list of triggers, triggers for anything more likely to get into trouble when you're in halt. Right. And since lonely is one of those, I was like, Oh yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of overwhelm can come from either being disconnected, you know, being lonely or being in bad relationships. Yeah, or having um, uh, unrealistic expectations of what the relationship is like. I mean, sometimes we're with people and we're still lonely because we want something, maybe something unreasonable, like you know, or the, not even <laughs> unreasonable, just unexpressed. Sure, yeah, you know, it could be either one. Yeah, it could be that you express it and the person's like, well, no, <laughs> you know, right? But yeah, if it's unexpressed, who knows whether it's reasonable or not, and. But you're still the only one being disappointed because nobody even knows that there's a problem. I wrote down, there's a difference between presence and connection. All too often, I think we kind of check connection off of our lists. Mm. Like, yep, I've got friends and family. I'm good to go. But sometimes those are, you know, just spending time with those people doesn't necessarily count as connection. Yeah, I think we still need to be intentional. Right. I mean, we've got to be intentionally intentional all throughout, right? To make the event happen in the first place, you know, set the appointment and actually do the hanging out. But then once we're there, be uh, ourselves, be vulnerable, be open. Right. Express the, I don't know. I mean, I, I know I'm definitely one who's like, has trouble saying, you know, what I want sometimes and, and then can get disappointed. And <laughs> <laughs> so, do, you know, do that. Um, oh, and another uh, thing we may experience disappointment is if we, are present but not connected, but we're expecting the benefits of real connection, like we talk about on our show all the time, and they're not coming. It's, it's maybe you're not doing the actual connection part, like showing up's half of it, right? But we got to do the other half too. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that philosophy of like if you're sitting in a pew at church, you're good to go, versus like you know the the work of Christianity, the relationship part of it is. Spending daily time with Jesus, you know, surrendering your life, prayer, getting in God's word, listening to what he has to say. It's not just going to church on Sunday. Yeah. You know? And sometimes I think we treat relationships that way. We show up, you know, we're at events or whatever without actually doing the the connection work, mm-hmm. the helping a relationship grow part. Yeah. You know, one thing from doing the Carol Tuttle you know, energy type work that I learned, I feel like is that, um, it's, it's important to, to know what the other person's expectation expectations are too. Yeah. I mean, they need to voice those and you need to voice yours, but some people really do just value getting together and, you know, playing racquetball or something. And maybe you don't really talk about anything, but to them, that's a great relationship. And if you're, you know, and it's going to be like pulling teeth to try to get them to come, talk about their feelings or something if that's something that's important to you you know so right you know knowing and honoring them and their personality and their gifts and meeting them where they're at and hopefully they'll meet you where they're where you're at too and you'll both kind of change and grow together but right there could be people that just kind of want to have fun 
you know, and do things and not there talk, are. not we talk so much. Like yeah. <laughs> and so sometimes it's like, oh, this relationship is just, what is it even, you know, but to them it's, it's just fine. Right. And I want to honor that, you know? Yeah. It is very stretching and it is important to get to know, you know, the people that are in relationship with you whoever your friends and family are and figure out what type they are and be like, okay, what's important to you? Mm -hmm. So definitely having that expectations yeah. talk being like, what does a good friendship look like to you? Yeah. And are that's, we working towards that? And that's the you or the me or whatever. The guy listening to this show <laughs> being intentional with the whoever else out there. And yeah, we're kind of laying, we're figuring it out and we're like, okay, well, here's kind of the guidelines for this relationship. I can deal with that. And, or, uh, if it's not something I can really deal with, being like, well, I would like it to be kind of different, and here's why and how, and can we try that? And if the person's like, that's not, <laughs> you know, that's something. But you're still putting yourself right. out there with the, like, here's what I want. I mean, I want right. to walk down this path with you. Right. You want the relationship to keep growing. Ideally, we all want to be in relationships where we are encouraging the other person and they're encouraging us. And together, we're growing closer to, you know, being the people that God designed us to be. Mm -hmm. And without that vulnerability step, without us, you know, if if nobody's doing the like, oh, what's this relationship about? Then then I'm gonna start doing that. And but that's being vulnerable too. Like I'm putting myself out there right. saying, hey, um, can we do a little relationship work here? And if they're like. Uh, you're weird. Feelings share. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, you might get shot down, but it, that's the work of intentionality too. Right. And that kind of goes along with the other thing I was thinking, which is to prioritize who you invest in because it's really easy to get overwhelmed. We have so many uh, surface connections in our lives today between, you know, work and church and Facebook and Mm -hmm. Yeah, the list goes on and on. We've got so many different people we could connect with. It's not like it's going to cost us a million dollars to call uh, long distance. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, it really is. The sky is the limit now. Right. Well, and, you know, of my best friends, one of them is long distance. Two of them are long distance. Mm -hmm. One of them is local. Yeah. But and, Oh, go ahead. But we make it work, you know, and we've both decided that, our expectations for the relationship match up what we want, what we're, you know, what is beneficial to both of us. We can both provide. And yeah. so we, we use Voxer. <laughs> right. And I was just going to say, we ought to know you and I anyway, Liz, because we developed our relationship when it did cost a million dollars to call halfway across the country and Maybe keep your relationship going. A million dollars, but <laughs> we spent a lot of money on long distance phone calls when we were, Developing our friendship and dating and stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point is you can connect with everybody and their mother, but pick who you want to connect with. You know, pick people that will be propellers like we've talked about before. You know, you've got your drainers, people that suck the life out of you, your maintainers that don't help you grow, and then your propellers, people that help you grow and be more yourself. Mm -hmm. So pick the people who are propellers that you want to invest in and Go invest in them. Yeah. Make sure you're a propeller too. Right. And one other important point about the doctor that Dr. May brings up in the Addiction and Grace book is that in this step in the process too, we're also seeking out the wisdom of our elders. And so sometimes there the relationship might not develop into like this buddy-buddy relationship, but you're still mm -hmm. engaged in vulnerability by submitting yourself to somebody who you think has some wisdom that you want and saying, can I learn from you? Can I, Right. can you teach me something? And you know, they could say yes or no at that point. And so that's you putting yourself out there. And that's an important part of growing too, is like reaching, you know, holding hands with somebody who's farther down the path so they can pull you forward. I love that. I love getting discipled by people that are further along, even if it's just through, you know, books or yeah. classes, different resources that aren't necessarily a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Mm -hmm. And along with that is, the personality stuff again, you know, um, I've got this man that I really respect at my church. He's not my same personality type at all. And so when I get feedback from him, if I don't be intentional in my own mind about what he's saying, it can feel like criticism, 
But when I realize what's going on, I'm like, he's trying to help me. He's trying to improve the process and he's trying right. to um, encourage me. And I've, but I've got to realize that. Otherwise I get frustrated because I just feel like, oh man, why? I guess he didn't think I did that very good because he just came up and offered all these kind of tips, you know? Uh-huh. And, but I want those tips and I've been accepting those with that kind of mindset about what I know about him. And I've been very grateful for, you know, the little tips and the little suggestions that he has to offer. And he's, right. he's a wise person and I want to learn. Because type fours do not <laughs> offer their tips to just anybody. Right. I know that from uh, experience with you. You should. (laughs) Being married to a type four. Yep. (laughs) This is something that we definitely want to work on because healthy relationships, as we've talked about earlier this week, you know, we can't go it alone and healthy relationships have an amazing healing power. Sometimes we underestimate that, especially if we've been in negative relationships. I know for me, Coming from a trauma background, I had so many negative relationships in my life that I was just like, oh, this is so much work and this is hard and the payoff is not worth it. And I just felt like having a relationship was yeah. an invitation invitation to get beat up, right. you know? Yeah. It's kind of hard to see that a relationship could, could go another way. Right. If they're all negative, it's like, well, there's no positive relationship. That's a fairy tale, but... Right. We're here to say it's, it's not, not a fair yeah. tale. <laughs> and that it's important to keep after it. And sometimes that means changing who you prioritize. Sure. Because there have definitely been times when I've reached out to somebody and they have not reached back. And I've had to say, okay, that's okay. They're at a place that has nothing to do with me. It has to do with where they're at in their lives. And so I'm just going to move on to somebody yeah. who can reach back, you know? Yeah. We got to keep trying i mean relationships are so important we don't just get kind of our relationship quota and just stop we're always going to be meeting new people and relationships are going to grow stronger and some are going to fade and i think that's just normal i I know for me as a type two i want everything to stay the same all the time but helps me to realize that relationships are more dynamic than that and that's fine Yep, people are there for a season. It could be a long season or a short season. Yeah. All right, we love you guys, and we're praying for you. Thanks to everybody that's been sharing the show. We really appreciate it. If you have found this podcast helpful, please do share it or subscribe to it. Yeah, I, I don't know if we... Well, we never mentioned it on here. It's on our show notes. But yeah, you can find this show pretty much anywhere. Podcasts are... They're not really sold, are they? Anywhere they're... Are available. Yeah, iTunes... Uh, Google, YouTube, Stitcher, and I think even Spotify, although I don't know how to find it on Spotify, but I do know <laughs> it's getting downloaded and streamed on Spotify somehow. So maybe somewhere, if somehow. you know how to do that, <laughs> drop me a line. <laughs> Seriously. Have an awesome Thursday and come back tomorrow and we will talk about being complete with relationships and community. Yep. See you then. Mm-hmm.